wish this thing had a little bit bigger fuel tank on. I think it's like seven gallons. Hey everyone, Mike here, Rusty Garage and Homestead. Today I'm down here on the pond by the inlet, which is this little slough right here. So several years ago, I came in here with the dozer and pushed a bunch of trees out of here and just kind of skimmed some of the dirt out of here to build this road up that I'm standing on. This road here is about four to five foot taller than it used to be. Used to, there's a creek right up there and it used to run right along this edge and snake back around this way right across the creek into here, coming into the pond. And there was a bunch of trees and this was all just kind of real soft and marshy because this thing always ran water. But the level's gotten low and I need to clean the inlet of this. So when I pushed all this dirt and everything up onto this road, uh, all of that got disturbed. So when water started coming in here, all the loose sandy soil started collecting up here by the inlet. Anytime you disturb dirt like that and water starts running through it, all the loose and smaller stuff, the fines is gonna end up washing out and end up making like a sandbar somewhere. So today, while the water level's down on the inlet here, I'm gonna push that little stump out of the way. There's another one right here. I'm gonna take Tiny, bring it over here, and I'm gonna start digging out a bunch of this soil, uh, basically sand. I'm gonna pile it up however far I can get over here, and then I'll come around with a tractor, scoop it up, put it up on the road, and haul this stuff off, and then we'll carry it over here to our dirt pile. So that's what we got going on today. So before we go any further, I've had a few different channels send me some channel stickers and I've been trying to come up with a unique uh, place to put them where they could be showcased on the channel and other people be able to see them. So what I finally decided that I was gonna do is I'm gonna start putting channel stickers, ones that get sent to me, on the loader frame of Tiny. So first up, we got my buddy Travis. Travis does firewood. He sent me a sticker. Uh, he sent me a couple stickers quite a while back. He's got sent me this one and he sent me the Firewood Addicts Nation podcast sticker that he's got. Uh, he's on season two right now of the Firewood Addicts Podcast Nation. I was on season one, episode one. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link it right up here. But Travis does a lot of cool different firewood stuff. Talks about the business as a side hustle. Talks about different ways to split firewood. He does a lot of different reviews on different things. So since he sent me these first, these are the first stickers going on the loader frame. So I've already wiped all the dirt and everything off of the loader frame in preparation of putting these stickers on. But I do think that I may want to, once I get so many on here, uh, go ahead and like put some clear cut over it just to help kind of protect some of these. So Travis, you are the first one put on the loader frame of Tiny. And the Firewood Addicts Nation sticker, it's going to go right next to it. Travis, I haven't even put any of my own stickers on this machine yet. Okay, there's the Firewood Addicts Nation sticker. So next up is my buddy Lucas over at Peaks Peak Hobby Homestead. Lucas has a 38 acre homestead over in eastern Kentucky that he's doing a lot of pretty cool stuff with. I started watching Lucas years ago when he was doing a cabin build out by his pond. The cabin has turned out awesome. Here recently he's been doing a lot of sawmilling. He built a woodshed around his sawmill. And if you want to see what a Kubota BX tractor is capable of doing, go check it out. Because he's put his little Kubota BX through some stuff that I wouldn't think that that machine would even be able to do. So Lucas is the next one up on the loader frame. So the next channel up is Brad at Firewood at the Furnace. Brad sent me a couple different stickers. That is his YouTube channel. And he also has an event every year that he puts on, which is called Fellowship at the Furnace. He also sent me a sticker for that one as well. But Brad has probably one of the best looking wood yards that I've seen on YouTube. There's a lot of different channels that have wood yards. Brad's is laid out just real nice. Nice, pretty straight rows. He's got a great setup with some awesome splitters. And then his event every year that he has, the Fellowship at the Furnace, there's a lot of people that come together. He does a bunch of giveaways. A lot of other people bring their splitters. A lot of them are Easton made splitters and everyone gets to kind of see the other splitters operate and test run them and just kind of have good fellowship with everyone. So Brad, thank you for these. Brad's up next on the loader frame. Okay, Brad, let's go next to Mr. Lucas. So next, Brad's event, Fellowship at the Furnace, is going to go next to his channel logo. These are some really good quality stickers. I'm committed. It's stuck. I got a little bit of overlap. That's okay. All right, so here they are. Travis, Lucas, and Brad. I'll put links to all three of these channels down in the description box. So go check them out. Tell them I sent you. Lucas over at Peaks Peak Hobby Homestead has legitimately pushed his Kubota BX to the limits. And he is now in the market for a larger tractor to help move logs around to a sawmill. So if you would, go over to Lucas's channel, tell him I sent you, and tell him how much he needs a TYM 2515H. So what do you guys think on the stickers? Should I go ahead and just put some clear coat over these just to help kind of preserve them, keep them from getting scratched so bad? Hopefully this machine doesn't get just crazy scratched up, but it is a tractor. It is a working tool here on the farm. So scratches and stuff like that are bound to happen. 
So if you haven't checked out any of these channels, I encourage you to do so. A lot of good content on all these channels. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you already watched on these channels.
you guys can see I'm pretty far up. Uh, the backhoe's about as far down as it's going to go. I'm up on the road just trying to dig in around this inlet. This thing needs about two more foot of reach. I don't want to dig right up under the horn, but I'm getting oh, probably eight inches to a foot from it. This thing will ever dry out again. I'll cut a trench with the backhoe right along this edge so everything can drain down through it. And I'll take the dozer back in here and I'd like to dig about two or three more foot out of this thing. Okay, that's probably going to be about it. I need to get back over there where you all are at the camera and get that last little bit of dirt picked up out of there and just... There's a few trees in the way. That might be a little difficult. I'll see what I can come up with. Okay, this isn't my best work. The little backhoe would really benefit from a few more feet of reach. But here's what we ended up with. I've got most of this dug out, threw a bunch of it up here. There's a little junk here that's got some branches and stuff in it, so it's fine. Cows will end up knocking it down and smoothing it out anyways. Got a little excess dirt spread out over the road, which that's fine. That's moist, everything else is dry around here, so this stuff will dry out real quick. Probably by the end of the day, it'll look like powder like the rest of it. But right out here, I could not reach that little spot from either side, from over here or over here. And I'm sure you could see in the video, whenever I was up on the pond dam, the backhoe was reached down as far as it actually could go. Cause it may not look it on camera, but this road actually sticks up fairly high from everything else. I had to build it up this high because on more than one occasion before I did, I seen water coming from this inlet over the entire road here into the pond. I used to have some video of it. If I can find it, I'll throw it in here just so you guys can see. But this pond area right here used to look a whole lot different. There used to be a lot of trees on both sides of this and it was overgrown. You'd drive a truck or tractor through here and you'd be getting slapped by limbs. So over here on the old pond, before I built this up and added these horns here, you know, there's some trees growing all along this bank. I ripped a lot of them out, but they used to be part of the land would go out there probably about where the end of my finger is. And this creek came in and went straight into the pond. And this has always been a stagnant uh, piece of the pond that never really got a lot of good circulation. So when I was digging all this out, I ripped a bunch of trees out through here and I took the dozer back in here. This was the year that the pond had actually dried up all in this low spot. So I was able to get the dozer out here and push a bunch of this dirt up out of here and cut that whole little landmass out. And that has helped with some of the circulation, but I really think I want to take the backhoe over in here and start cutting a little trench from the outlet of the inlet here over in here. So when the water comes in, it'll actually turn and start mixing over here before it goes into the big pond. And one of these days, this thing's gonna dry out again. Same with the inlet that I dug out a few years ago. And as soon as it does, I'm going to 
try to get this thing cleaned out as much as I can. With Tiny, I'll use the backhoe, the front end loader, the dozer if it's hard enough. But if you know anything about ponds, normally once they dry out, it has a hard crust on top. And then once you break through that crust, there's still a lot of muckiness down in there. So I might have to take the backhoe and just dig some trenches so we can get some of the deeper parts to dry out. I do appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed the video, give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.